good morning. How, how is my church family doing? Well, good to see you. We're so glad you're here this morning. Uh, last night, I, uh, I looked out my door, and it was all smoking over here. My neighbor was burning, but I'm, I look over, and I'm like, man, is my church on fire? I had to come over and check. And we're, 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 but I want to be on fire for Jesus, right? Right, right, Miss Vonnie? So, so again, if you're with us this morning, uh, we're so glad you're here. Uh, again, my name is Corey, and I have the privilege of uh, again, leading this great fine folks of, of faith here. Uh, and it's, it's, it's great to, to come and to worship and, uh, you know, get the treat. And two, two, two Sundays this month, we get to see Bob and Joyce sing with us and play with us, you know. Uh, I keep counting down the days when we get to see them more often. <laughs> so, so, again, we, we're so glad you're here. Uh, just a, a few things that, you know, as, we, as, we've, as we've kind of looking ahead, um, I want to remind you all that are here, there's 11 dozen eggs in the fridge. I put it on Facebook post there that we have, you know, I have 11 dozen of eggs in there. So, so please, you know, uh, you can go, don't fight over them. But if you want a, a dozen, you know, uh, and you're here, if you want two dozen or you want to take them all, if nobody wants to take them, they're, they're there for you to take this morning. So I just, you know, again, I want to, as you know, we have abundance of eggs sometimes. And so we, we wanted to share with our church family and those that, uh, you know, maybe you can share with somebody else that, you know, needs some eggs. So, uh, again, share those, uh, we're uh, continuing Bible study going forward next week in Revelation as well. So if you're, you, you wanted to join in, you can connect in the, the uh, morning at 11.30 here with us on Wednesday or 6.30 in the evening. Or again, those here, again, we've got that private Facebook page for those that want to be a part of it but not. Because again, we want to make sure you feel okay with um, being on camera those that are on camera and being there, because some may not like to be on camera out to everybody, so it's just wanting to keep it together as a group. So again, if you want to join in there, go for it and connect with me. Uh, and other than that, I don't think when it comes to the opportunities, um, I don't believe, am I missing any, Miss Vonnie? Any, 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 maybe is there an opportunity, an announcement, excitement in church this morning anybody got? I, I, you know, one, one is, you know, the joy of, of seeing people outside the church and connecting. So, um, but this morning we're going to, as we've shifted up a little bit here, you know, so I apologize, you know, no, I, I don't, we like to shift it up. Uh, we're going to, we're going to do the, the, uh, the prayer, but within prayer, also the offertory prayer as well this morning. Uh, so again, if you're watching or you're here today, uh, our offering plate is in the back uh, underneath the light, uh, uh, fixtures, uh, switches, uh, and uh, again, if, you're, if you've given, you can give in as you walk in or walk out, or again, we have our secured giving at midlandfaith.org, giving tab, uh, and uh, you can go there, and just a, a, you know, a heads up, if you go check the website here in a couple of weeks, it's going to change, so uh, it'll still have the giving tab and all that up there, but you know, it'll, it'll look a little different, so uh, just as another way of church to kind of see what what's shifting a little bit to you know, check that out. I, I work on it about midnight at night when I'm laying in bed relaxing just because it's I enjoy doing that kind of things when I wind down. So uh, updating it a little bit. Uh, so again, when it comes to our, our, our prayer, joys, and concerns, um, our nation, our state around us, there's a lot of civil unrest going on. You know, I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter where you're at politically, but we need to be in prayer for those. Political leaders, the officers, uh, I understand where there's tension right now in, the, that, in that, that side of police officers, but we know that there's great ones out there. We know there's one, it just, but we still need to be in prayer for them. Be in prayer for the families, you know, of, of, of the lives, no matter what, a live matter. I don't care if you're a, a convict or who you are, what you are, but all lives matter to God. So our prayers for those as well. And honestly, my prayer today too just has been heavy on those that are incarcerated. You know, and my prayer is that we can help maybe as a church someday or, or, or families help those that have gone through it, you know, been there and reenter back into society because when they enter back in, we know that it's hard, hard for them. And I'm, my, my prayers for those people. Uh, again, my prayers for physicians, doctors, and, and leaders, um, my prayers for each one of you, our church family, you know, that we can help reach and connect people to Jesus in a loving way. 
in, in a caring way. And as you look on here, there's several. As, as last week, Carol Ann Ritter asked for prayers for her grandfather. Well, I think it was right after church, she posted on Facebook that her grandpa had passed away. So be with Carol Ann right now and in that way. And I know she posted something on Facebook asking, you know, not really, but she's, you know, asking for prayers in, in a sense. It was kind of what I, what I took out of it, just an unspoken prayer that she had and she has. Uh, again, you know, keeping prayers, you know, uh, those in our prayer list, you know, um, keep them in your prayers as well. And, and, and I want to come to church, like I say, every week, you know, what's some joys, some prayers in front today, the house that you want to bring that we can bring to the Lord this morning? So if anybody has one, Julie? So uh, Ethan's cousin, Dustin, passed away unexpectedly. So keep the family in your prayers. Shelly. So April's way too young to, you know, get a knee replacement, knee situation. So they're referring to a, a specialist doctor to, to do some injections, see if that'll help or something. So, again, keep April in your prayers as well. Uh, any, any other prayers, joys, concerns? Debbie? Keeping Debbie in your prayers, that last injection she went to down to Cleveland Clinic didn't work real well. And so their referral to another orthopedic surgeon. So keep, keep them in your prayers. Keep, you know, Perry and Debbie is going through that again. Uh, any, other, any other prayers and joys? Yes. 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 Thank you for that. Yes, yeah, she said keep the, the babies that are being aborted and tested and just the unethical things that we're doing with our, our children that matter, babies that matter. So, yes, we'll be, you know, keeping those in prayer. And I know some of us in the room that have dealt with loss of children and ourselves and, and going through pregnancy uh hard times you know it, it really touches us because you know we're ones that try and you know so we're yes yes i'd gladly take those babies <laughs> but i mean and that's that's kind of i guess you can pray for lynn and i um kind of on that lines um a couple weeks ago we decided to start praying more about what it looks like to to do uh adoption um you know as many of you guys know we keep trying to have a, another one and you know, uh, nothing's there. I mean, but uh, um, God has just laid on a heart to start the process to do an adoption to foster care. So keep us in your prayers. We go through this this season um, of uh, of newness. Uh, Got to go through all the checklists. Um, but but we believe that you know when I look on that Mar website that all those kids matter, and they just I just want to go hug them all when I see all those kids on that that website. If you don't want if you don't want to cry, don't go on that website. You see kids that just have been on that website that should be adopted and find their forever home. So my prayer is honestly, when I look on there, that I pray over each kid on that that list that they find a forever home that can call them their their child and love on them. Is there anybody else that's got any prayer, joy, concerns? Well, let's let's go to to the word of prayer here this morning. <clears throat> And it's, it's so good, again, to see each one of you, just to look out and see Glenda, Brianna, and, and the new faces, the other faces, my, my family faces, you know, uh, Dan's mom sitting over there. I've connected with her once, and, you know, it's good to see you here. We're so blessed to see you. Um, but, Lord, we just come before you right now. Lord, with heavy hearts, we really br bring to these children. All lives matter. We know that. 
But Lord, right now we pray for those those women that are going through the process and and, and, and feeling that they need to, you know, and they don't they aren't we're unworthy in, in going through that abortion process, Lord. I just pray that they just go through it and put the kid up for somebody that just love on that child. And Lord, that we can stop using our bodies as, as ways, especially young ones, as instruments sometimes, Lord. And right now we just bring forth to you our church, our church family. Lord, they are loved, they're cared for. And Lord, right now I just ask your Holy Spirit, guide us as we go through life, as we hear of these things, like of, you know, Ethan's family member, a loved one, you know, unexpectedly passing. Lord, we ask that you comfort the family. Lord, we ask you to be with the family during this time and this season. May Julie be a, a, a light in, in that family. May Julie be hope in that family. May Julie be one to just love on them. And Lord, be with April as she, she's dealing with the knee stuff. Lord, that uh, we pray that she sees a new doctor, that they can help her with that pain, ease the pain. But I also pray your Holy Spirit comes before all that and heals her, strengthens her, guides her. And Lord, right now I ask you to be with Debbie, you know, as Debbie's, you know, has tried and tried and tried. Lord, we, we know she's not given up to get through this. You know, she's, she's got the strength like no other. Even in the midst of the pain, we can see the strength that she conveys. But Lord, I ask that you be with her as she goes through this process. And right now, I, I pray you be with all the unspoken and spokenness in the room. And especially, Lord, whatever is put in that offering plate, Lord, you use it to glorify your kingdom. Because, Lord, it's for your honor and your glory that we can utilize it to help us financially in the church and to reach and teach and love those. Because, Lord, you call us to be that church that is knowing, growing, going. Lord, I pray that we can be that way. And, Lord, right now I pray you come as we, as we worship you, as we sing to you, Lord. You call us to sing with joyful noise. So, Lord, it, it's okay if I, I'm out of pitch. I understand because you call me to sing, to worship you. So, Lord, right now, as we transition to, to singing and, and, and to, to worshiping you, may we hear from you. May we grow in the knowledge. And, Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit come and be present in this time. In your blessed name I pray. Amen. On the theme of standing this morning, I stand, I stand in awe of you. And the first song this morning is Standing in the Savior's Love. Would you stand and sing with me? I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wondered how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. Is my Savior's love for me. For me it was in the garden. He prayed not my will but thine. He had no tears for his own grief, but sweat drops of blood for mine. How marvelous, how, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. Oh, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. He took my sins and my sorrows. He made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. How marvelous, how, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. 
When with the ransomed in glory His face I at last shall see Twill be my joy through the ages To sing of His love for me How marvelous, how wonderful And my song shall ever be Is my Savior's love for me? Sing it out. How marvelous, how how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Oh, just think of it, church. How marvelous. How wonderful. We could go on with this description of his love and how wonderful it is. And this little Sydney up here clapping for grandpa and grandma up here. <laughs> Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. You may be seated. Let's pray. Father, we come to you worshiping you, loving you. We know we can't possibly repay you. We ask that you'd be with Corey and Linda and his family yes. as they go through this process, decide what to do. Lord, we just pray that it's in your hands that your will will be done. Yes. That if they can go through this uh, adoption process, yes. whatever process it might need, uh, something else perchance, whatever you decide, whatever yes. you will to be done, Lord, let it be done. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, well, thank you. Thank you. I try not to always pray about myself for myself, you know. But uh, thank you, guys. It's, a, it's one of those processes. It's, it's, it's been tough, to, like I said. And so any prayers as we go through it, we'd be appreciative. So as we... We, we head into today, into what God has been leading. Uh, I, I really, I really been, you know, looking through the lectionary because it's just been helping me a little bit better of preparing my messages and connecting with, with you and here and those that are watching later. And uh, I don't know about you, sometimes you get done with it and you walk away like, how did that come across? And, and it's just great when you get those encouraging, hey, thanks for that. I needed that today. It, you know, it meant, meant something to me. And then sometimes you get home and your wife's like, that was good, but you can work on that. And I'm like, you know, it's very good to have the humbleness of, of, of somebody that, you know, it's the humbleness of being able to know. And it ain't just Linda, it's Evan that does it too. So, so you know, having, having a family that's very humble um, and, and helping me. So, again, 
I just want to say it's great to see some new faces, some that I've not seen, and so we're, we're, again, we're glad you're here. Glenda, Brianna, we're so glad to see you in this morning. I haven't seen you, in a, I mean, I know you've been watching online and connecting, but so glad to see you here. And I know those, again, that are watching at home, we, again, I know I say we're keeping you in prayer, but we are. I know Tim's not here and, and, uh, and, and some of our other lovely family of church, but we're so glad. And then Dan's mom, I always forget her name. What's your name? Betty. Betty. See, I always forget Miss Betty's name, but I'll, I won't forget it. I'll try not to. If I do, I'm sorry. So we're so glad you're, you, again, are here. And as we've been going through this process of looking at it, I really, I really looked at the Great Commission, and, and, and we all know, we all know the Matthew 28 Great Commission. And I don't know about any of you, as, you, as you're going through and reading through the lectionary, reading through the, uh, the, the commentaries, and reading through, uh, I use uh, uh, Logos Bible app. It's a software that, you know, I've been blessed to have through the years of the church I've been a part of and have added to it, and just going through and doing word studies and connecting the dots, and, and you're like, Wow, I didn't realize. I mean, I knew it, but as you go through it, there's, there's, there's multiple accounts of the Great Commission within the, within the Gospels and in Acts. You know, I, I knew it, but you're, as you're pulling through it, you're like, wow. And as a matter of fact, last week's passage that we went through was partially in, in John 20, 19 through 23, was part of John's account to the Great Commission, you know, as well, you know. Um, and I know we didn't key on it last week at that uh, and we're, we're not keying this week. We're, we, we'll see Matthew 28. We'll see a few of them because I'm going to read them with you guys this, this morning. Or, but we're really kind of looking at the idea of the, the Luke 24, 44 through 49, you know, passage this morning uh, together. But it just, it really, like I said, as I, as I dive through, it's like, man, are we doing, so? How are we, how are we doing with it? You know, I mean, the title, Great Commission, how are we, how are we doing in this season? You know, are we all, how are we reaching? How are we connecting? What are we doing? And, and. And I want to start by just reading again the, uh, the, the passage in Matthew 28. And I, I was going to say, I promise you today it was going to be on the screen. Because last week was, was, an, was, it was an error not on the, the person in the back. It was an error on the pastor. Well, technology. You know, I, I put it in and I thought it worked and, and, and I walked away. But today I made sure I checked a couple times. So, so the, the people in the back and you and in, in, in looking at it can see it. So... Uh, we all know this, this, the Great Commission passage out of Matthew. It said, verse 16 in Matthew 28 there, it said, Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they, when they saw him there, they were, uh, Jesus had told them to go where they saw him, worshiping him, but some of them doubted. Where they went, they were worshiping and doubted. Jesus came to his disciples in verse 18, and he says, I have given you all the authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go make disciples all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always to the ends of the age. So we understand that is our, that is our you know, our, as we know, part of our church, we're knowing, growing, going. Part of us, wanting, we want to go out and know him. We want to help grow in him, and we want to go serve alongside him. And going is our Matthew uh, 19, verse 20, you know, part of our mission, vision of the church to go do. But it's not only the only passage in, in the Great Commission concept either, you know, that we have in front of us. You know, again, the, you know, math, um, in, back in Mark here, Mark 16, uh, 14 through 18, it then says this. Still later he appeared to the 11 disciples as they were eating together. He rebuked them for their stubborn unbelief because they refused to believe who had seen him after he had been risen from the dead. And then he told them, go into the world and preach the good news to everyone, anywhere who, anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. But anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miracle signs accompanied those who believed. They casted out demons in, in his name, and they will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. Don't worry, we're not going to handle snakes in our church. And if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. Again, we ain't going to drink any poisonous. But they will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. I mean, I, we, can, we can do that in here. I believe in healing, excuse me. And then our passage this morning um, from, from Luke uh, 24, 44 through 49, it said, Then he said, 
when I was with you before, I, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and, r- and rise from the dead on the third day. It w- was also written that the message would be proclaimed to the, in authority of his name to all nations beginning in J- Jerusalem. There is a forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of all these things. And now I will send the Holy Spirit just as the Father promised, but stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with the power from heaven. And again, we read John, but you can write that down as another notation, but we're going to jump to look at, you know, Acts here. Acts 1, 4 through 8, but really the, 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 the latter half of 8, more you know, after 8, that's where 7 and 8 he's saying, he says in 7, he replied, The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they're not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the age, earth. So let me pray real quick. Lord, again, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be ever so pleasing and acceptable, because, Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So as I looked at this passage, as I looked through it, I'll be honest, as I started reading it, I'm like, how is that Luke passage really relate to the Great Commission in my mind as I was going through it? And, you know, because it's got a lot more in there as you read it, right? And, 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 and reading through it, if you read before, because I love to, you know, do, you know, expository, which meaning I like to look in front and look behind. Well, when you look, you know, behind, there's a lot more details of, of, of what was taking place, what they saw. And, and what's unique is, as, as you look at these passages, especially here in, in, in Luke, the account of Jesus happened before this. In John, it happened within that concept of the Great Commission. And Mark, it was right in the line of that. They're all, it's, it's a very interesting, integral piece of how each of the Gospels put, put it into perspective on where the Great Commission and how to reach and, and what happened on the day, you know, that, that Sunday or that day when he rose, when they saw him, right? I mean, we read it in, in Matthew, they saw the 11 and so forth. But to me, when I look at the idea of, of, of the gospel, right? The gospel itself, there's, there's what, what I like to see here in, in this is the foundation of the gospel. So there's, there's this foundation that we have, right? And we saw that in verse 44 through 46a, technically, you want to get technical-wise. And again, it said, then he said, when I was with you, before I told you, so again, when I was with you, before I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the, the Psalms must be fulfilled, then he opened their minds to understand scripture, and he said, yes, it was written. So he's given us a foundation right there. He's telling us what he's done. He's, he's going out and he's teaching the laws to Moses and the prophets and, and Psalms must be fulfilled. We must understand them, right? We must be open to the Holy Scripture, the Scripture that is true, truly God-breathed. It ain't no fakeness. It ain't no, it's truly what God says. I, I mean, we're a church that believes that the Bible is not just a guidebook, but it is the inerrant word of God. It is the truth. It's the lights away. We, we ain't going to get through it, but through reading. And, and so to me, when I, when I look at that, I, I think of the idea of the foundation of the gospel, right? So anybody in here ever worked around big cities or been around big cities when they're building a skyscraper? Well, we all know when you, when you build a skyscraper, we all know it. We, or I, I assume we all know it, and that could get me wrong here, but they, they put the big old, you know, fencing around it, and then they, they, they hide the fence so you can't see But yet, when they build that skyscraper, they're digging with big old, you know, excavators and such, and they're digging deep down into the ground. So they're 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 digging so deep in the ground that that it's taking them. I mean, sometimes it takes a company to build a uh, the the base six months to a year. They say to to build up this 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 base below in the the hole in the ground to build up this tall building. This, this structure, I mean, it, it just blows my mind how, how long it takes them to do so. But they're building underneath because it's necessary for them to build a strong foundation. A strong foundation can be built that is capable of supporting that skyscraper. 
probably thinking, what, are we supposed to be skyscrapers? No, but I think we need to have foundation that are not on rocky, on sinking. We need to be on hard foundation, not cracking. We need to be on, on firm, firm foundation because Christ calls us to be on it, right? I mean, a doghouse has no foundation. My chicken coop in my yard has no foundation. Our house has a foundation, but our church here, there's part of it that's right on a slab. Slab foundation, well, we know that slab, some, some of those can sink a little bit. But the fact that they don't need to be on this heavy foundation because they're not having all that weight put down, right? I mean, those skyscrapers are different because they have to have that weight. They have to have that foundation. And so to me, so in, in our, our Christian life and, and, and who we are, I, I think we need to have that foundation. Our upward potential is totally dependent on the foundation underneath it. We can say we've been in church for years and our whole life and, and, and we forget the concept of being a firm foundation, having that foundation in Christ rooted and, and, and rooted so deep that when, when something comes at us, we can't get knocked down. You know, I mean, them skyscrapers, I mean, I mean, I know they can cover wind. I mean, when Lynn and I used to live in St. Louis or in Highland, Illinois, right outside of St. Louis, Missouri, we used to go to the arch. Now, again, I, as I told you, I don't like heights. But you get up in that arch, and they take you up there, and you stand in that arch, and, and there's times you can feel it swaying. It's a moving. And you're like, is it going to fall? No, because it's built in the, such a way that it's so foundational that it's not going to fall. That's what the gospel is. It's built in a foundation because Christ, he said it. He said what he meant. He, he, he guided us. I mean, again, you look back at Matthew. In Matthew, in, in the Great Commission there, it says, I've been given all authority. He's given all authority on heaven and earth. You know, he's, he's got it in front of us, right? I mean, we have to have that foundation. And in order for us to have that foundation, it also helps us so we can go. Part of our mission as a church to go tell people is, is also having that foundation so we can do so. If we don't have that foundation, how do we go and tell people about Jesus? We're just going to kind of walk sidestep. I mean, but God's calling us to be truth. If God's calling our church to move forward in, in, in 2021 to 2022, what does it look like? We've got to figure out what is our foundation on. Is it on gossip? Is it on slander? Is it on what? What is it on? Is it on the riches and glory that God has in store for us that we just, you know, we're having our blinders on because we, we just can't see around it? But we need to be on a foundation that is strong for Jesus. Because he's going to get us through that too, right? He's going to walk with us. And he simply, I mean, it's, it's simple. He's got facts, the facts of the gospel we see. In part of verse, six, for, verse 46, excuse me, it says, Long ago the Messiah would suffer and die and raise from the dead on the third day. He gave us true facts. I don't know if we got to, it's, it's, it's telling us. I don't have to really keen further on and say why I believe that he's given us facts, but he's telling us right there, and we believe it, and we've seen it in all the other Gospels. We've seen it throughout the church history, right? Now, now I want to give you a few um, facts of the Gospels, if I will. It's not in the screen, but I have them here. Matthew's Gospel is primarily written for the Jewish audience. So, so to give you an account, the, that, that's what Matthew was. Mark's Gospel was primarily written for Roman audience in the in, that is the shortest gospel if you, you know, want to check it out. So if you want to start somewhere in the gospel, maybe Mark will be the one you want to start out in. Luke's gospel was primarily written for a Greek audience. But the best one of all that I think in, 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 in the gospels is John's gospel, primarily written to the people around the world. So, so each gospel, had, so to give you the facts, is each gospel has a purpose and a reason to connect. Why do they connect? It was, it was for those people. And so we, we, we still fit the bill on all those people because, you know, we believe Christ died and rose for all of us. But I want to do another fact, right? You know, facts are to be reckoned as true, right? Even if we don't feel that they are. For example, you get up and look at the sun and say, and the sun rose this morning. But we know the sun didn't rise. Rather, the earth rotated into the, the plane of the sun's light. So we've learned to accept that this is a fact, even though our feelings indicate otherwise. So there's facts, or other, you know, from otherwise. 
And then there's this, this thing called the fruits of the gospel, right? I mean, verse 47 says, It was written that this message would be proclaimed to the authority of his name, to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem, their forgiveness of sins for all who repent. Man, I think, I think that's, that's the key thing, the fruit of the gospel. What does it look like, right? And we've all seen and used a, a little le- electronic calculators, right? I mean, some in here, I, I, I remember when I was in middle school and they handed us a calculator. Some of you in here can do math better than I can on, on, in your head, you know. But when we got to school, they decided to give us all calculators. Something was wrong with that. Sorry, Kane. But what happens if you get in information confused or, or, or make an error on that calculator? What do you do? You, you, you press the clear button, and automatically all of the information is eliminated from the calculator. That's great, right? Clear. Then you begin again without trying to sort out the previous mistake. And in fact, there's no record of your mistake because it was lost forever. So, so, so you, you hit clear. It's gone. You can't get back. Now, some of our new Fandango calculators, they, they, they got that setting. You can still. But in terminology, but that's what happens to our sin when, we, when God forgives us. The consequences may remain, but the guilt that, you know, the legal condemnation for our offense is gone. So the, the fruit of this, and when he's saying the forgiveness of sin aspect is what I'm getting here, is, is somebody in the room or somebody watching online is feeling something like this. They're feeling like they can't hit that clear button because they made a mistake. And they, you know, and, 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 and they can. Because God forgives us. That's why, what again, he did on the cross for each one of us. And that's why I continually pray for those that are incarcerated. That's why I pray for those that are lost, because they need to know Jesus. And you think about it in the same way, here in you know, Colossians 1.9 it says, in the same way the gospel is, is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just that it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. So Paul and the apostles worked diligently in the gospel and got to see just the beginnings of the fruit of labor. They were witnessing to, you know, to the gospel beginning to spread and multiply throughout the lands. Even today we have had the opportunity to hear the gospel because the seeds that Paul laid during that time long ago. We have that. We have proof. You know, we have connection. Now, like I said before, I, I, I'll say it again. I'm so glad and blessed that I was able to go to, to, to Israel and to, to walk it and to see it and to experience it. And my prayer is that I can bring it to life for you and here. And maybe someday somebody here says, I want to go on that experience. I want to be there. I want to see what it is. Some of you may never be able to have that opportunity, but because people have, they can share it. That's what it's about, sharing the fruit, sharing the excitement, Right? And today we, we need to ask ourselves, how are we seeing the fruit of the gospel? How are we truly seeing the fruit of the gospel within our church, within our community, and within the, the state, the, 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 the nation? Where are we seeing the fruit at? Because every day we should be able to see how the gospel is produced and growing in our lives. We should see it, right? When a man receives the gospel, it immediately causes change and transformation. Every day after that, it continues to grow and bear new fruit all the way until they've reached heaven. That's what the fruit should be. We should be, right? What, what new fruit is, is being shown in our lives. We have to ask ourselves, what is that? What fruit is being shown in our lives? What are we doing? How's the gospel in our hearts this week being brought and being brought to us in, in, in a new height we didn't know previously? See, the gospel doesn't save us once. It saves us every day and continues to grow and bear fruit until the day we meet our maker in heaven. I think we simply have to ask the Lord to send his gospel power into our lives and let us bear fruit this day. I I believe God's calling us as a church to do so. Does it mean it's going to be easy? Does it mean it's going to come with a price? Does it mean it's going to come with something? It sure does. But if we're just doing church just to do church, the gospel's not being presented. We're not, we're not going to make disciples. We're not connecting people with Jesus. We're just getting feel good and walk out. Because the function here, this is the next, the function of the evangelists. That's what we all are. We're all evangelists. We're all called. We're all called accordingly to purpose to do what God's calling us to do. 
If it means it's in the, the factory, if it means it's in the, some of those jobs that we don't like that we do because we don't know why we're in them, but God has a reason why you're in them. You just got to understand why he has you there. But again, it says you are witnessing of all these things. You're witness of all these things, and now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my Father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with the power from heaven. Here it is, in the Bible. In the Bible, a witness is basically someone who seems, or seems, or sees something, excuse me, or something of amazing of importance. If this person b begins to share what they've seen, we call this bearing witness. It's a simple word, but, by, but being a witness carries a lot of responsibilities. If we truly are a witness for Jesus, it's, 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 it, bears some, it bears some weight. I mean, Jesus put to death for the faithful, declaring the, the truth about who he is, but it is through Jesus' death and resurrection that the followers become witnesses of the rest of the nations, just as God has intended there in Luke 22, 44-48. The bearer witness to what has seen and experienced Jesus' death, resurrection, and we offer a new life. Many of these early followers died for their witness. In fact, eventually, you know, what the Greek word of witness began, began to carry the connotation of martyr. I don't know how many of us today are, again, I've said this before, I'm going to say again, I don't know how many of us are, are prepared to, to, to be martyred or prepared to be put to death. But I believe that's what God's calling us to, to have a heart that says, hey, we need to, to be, bear witness. We can't be false in what we say we are. We have to be true to the word of God. And if that means it comes down to a, a, a point where your pastor's put in jail for what he believes, you're, 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 you know, somebody in the room gets, you know, it's, I thought I'd never say it, but I, I feel like it's coming in this, 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 this country, in this nation. We have to stand firm for what the gospel says. There's people out in our, our community. There's people in our neighborhoods that don't know Jesus. Or they've been hurt by the church. And can, we may be that one person that can connect to that person. It may be in your workplace. You might work alongside somebody that's just been down and, and felt like they're not worthy. God's called to equip you to go connect with them. Share the love of Christ with them. Be you. Be who you are. Connect people with Jesus. I mean, we're, we're seeing it in, in, in our community. I mean, honestly, right now we're seeing it in Lee Township like no other, in my opinion. It's all over this dump that's going on. I'm not saying I'm for or against and not trying to get political here in your church. But we got to pray, how can we be the light in this situation? Because there's people going after the, 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 the people, and it's just, in a community, we, we, Satan, he's, he's laughing, he's loving it. But we as a church, how can we come and not let that be a, a, a frustration to us? We can't. And I'm not saying people in here are. I'm just, we need to be in prayer. Because how, how's that Christ-like? If, if I get on there and jump on and say something, I'm not evangeling, right? I'm not being an evangelist. I'm being a, I'm being a negative person. And, you know, some of you and people around me have, have really helped me how I word things, how I say things, how we do things. Meaning the words, are they, they, they're stronger. They're stronger than anything. And, and I want to, I'm going to end a quote here before we, we go to communion, because we're going to go to communion together. And I just want to, as you go to communion, as I, as I say this last thing, communion is open to all people here. Again, if you're watching online, you know, you can go grab your elements, uh, bread, uh, orange juice, cracker, whatever it may be you use. I struggled lately with this idea of Communion. Because I think sometimes we take it just to take it. Sometimes we take it more than once. And in and, and, and our discipline in the Wesleyan Church, it says that, you know, we're, we're to take it every quarter. But we as a church have, have, I feel the meaning, it's not a ritual thing to me. It really is representation of that. So I just want you to know, if you're, you know, as I finish this last quote, we come to the point of communion, I want you to know just the table's prepared for all people. And, and it's not this just, hey, come take it and, and, and do it. If that's why you're doing it, I will say don't take it. But if you truly believe it's the body of Christ and the blood of Christ shed for you and I for the forgiveness of our sins, you are welcome at the table. 
And we as a church, we do it once a month. The third Thursday, or third Thursday, third Sunday. I'd love to say Thursday. I'm thinking, I, 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 my brain is, Julie's getting me over here. I'm just kidding, Julie. Um, but at the same point, it was in my brain. Maybe a Thursday I got something going on, apparently. <laughs> Linda, no, I got something going on Thursday. <laughs> oh, it's, it's soccer practice. We come to laughter. Thank you. That's laughter. <laughs> um, but we come together, and I do. We 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 do it. And Scripture says to do it as often as you can. John Wesley, our founder of of Methodist movement, says take it as often. It means he he could, he said take it every day if you could. But we can't lose the meaning because we should not lose it. And I, I feel like that's been a struggle lately. Is we're 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 losing some of these things to this world and. Communion is not that. I hope if I ever get to being a ritual thing, come talk to me. Because I don't believe it is. Because this last quote to me really, really sums up the Christian life. The, the Christian life should stand out to the world as a different. We should be like zebras among horses. When our lives are, is indistinguishable from the wor- worlds, we are like albino zebras. The real, uh, uh, the, they are real zebras, right? They're, they're real. Their parents are real zebras. They're all real, right? They knew they were zebras on the inside. But to all who see them from the outside, they're no different from a horse. I think that's the gospel to us. There's, there's people around us that don't know Jesus. They're human beings. They're brothers and sisters in Christ. They look just like us to a certain degree. They might be tall, they might be short, they might be red, yellow, black, and white. They are perfect in God's sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the people. So as we come to communion, as we come to this time of communion, we gather at the Lord's table. We all come who are loved by God, are loved by God. We come to a table of the Lord. We come to eat of what he has given us, the food, with no cost. We come and drink with no money to pay. We, 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 we We come to eat and drink with our hearts, our glad. Yes, Lord, you guide us. You guide our hearts, and our hearts truly are glad. And we're filled with thankfulness because in your great love, you didn't abandon us in this dark and fearful place of this world. But in Jesus, you came to us to rescue us, to restore us, and to give us new life. And all who are tired and burdened, and all who are frightened and unsafe, all who are sick and broken can come and find new life. That's what it is. That's what communion is. The table is open to all. The table is prepared for all. So come, come.
So in your silence where you're at, we remember the ways Jesus has sh showed us his love. On that evening, before he had died, he had supper with his friends. You know, he had supper with his disciples. And during that supper, he took a loaf of bread and he gave thanks for it and broke it. He, just, he didn't just eat himself. He passed it to all. He passed it to all of them. And as he did, he said, this is my body broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And after that meal, I just think about those disciples around the room. They were probably weeping. They were probably, I mean, they were just unsure. But yet, after that meal, Christ, he took that cup of wine. Or he gave thanks. And then he passed it around. And he said, this is my blood shed for you. Drink this and remember me. And now every time, every time we eat bread like this, and every time we drink the wine or juice like this, we remember, remember Jesus and his everlasting love. So as the worship team comes up to sing our last song, uh, Jesus paid it all, I want us to all pray a prayer our Father has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. to come. 
Would you stand as we sing this last? Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this very hour. As we took your last supper and we remember the sacrifice you made for us, we thank you and we worship you, Lord. Be with us as we leave, as we go through this week. We do not leave you behind, but you're always with us, always near us. And we will thank you forever. Amen. Go be the church. We love you. Hey, don't forget there's eggs in the, in the fridge. So I don't want to see them, so somebody take them. So hey, we love you. Should I?